तो आप हमें बता सकते हैं कि जो बलात्कार हो रही हैं इसको कैसे रोक सकते हैं आप हमें अपनी राय दे सकते हैं श्रोताओं की जो आग लग रही है दोष किसका है किसको हम दोष दे सकते हैं इस पर हम किसको दोष दें ड्राइवर्स को या फिर पुलिस को नमस्ते फीजी देश की धड़कन वीडियो फीजी टू आरोप मैं मोहिनी हमारे साथ में शामिल हो जाइएगा दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में हर सोमवार से शुक्रवार तक रात सात से आठ बजे तक दृष्टिकोण प्रोग्राम में Tonight, first votes cast in 2014 elections as day one of the pre-polling comes to an end. Elections office says pre-polling went off without any major hiccups. And RFMF calls on people to stop spreading rumors escalating the capture of Fijian troops in Syria. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Day one of pre-polling has ended around the country as hundreds of people cast their votes in remote locations around Fiji. We now cross over to Shanal Sivan who is standing by at the elections office in Suva. Shanal, what's the situation? Yes, Jackie, day one of uh, pre-polling has just ended and it has been an interesting day, not only at the pre-polling centres, but also at the elections office. Uh, joining us tonight is the Supervisor of Elections, Mr. Mohamed Sanim. Mr. Sanim, thank you for joining us tonight on FBC News. With the, uh, with the pre-polling today, what sort of responses are you getting from the exercise today? Uh, thank you. Pre-polling started this uh, morning and uh, we are pleased to say that the Fijian Elections Office managed to get all the pre-polling centres uh, operating on schedule. Our teams left yesterday and uh, this morning we opened on schedule and uh, close to uh, 8,000 people were to pre-poll today and uh, we are still in pre-polling at the moment uh, in some centres. Mm. With, with the lessons learned uh, today, uh, mm -hmm. what will you be applying tomorrow and what sort of lessons have you, have you gone through? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I think uh, for today, which was the first day of polling, uh, the Fijian Elections Office uh, learned some valuable lessons. We are currently working uh, upstairs uh, trying to uh, get it all organized so that tomorrow we don't face uh, similar issues. Uh, one of the most important things is for voters to check by sending their voter ID numbers to 545 so that they do not uh, uh, make a mistake and come and attend to a pre-polling when they are not to attend to that pre-polling of the day. So uh, my advice is to actually SMS your voter ID numbers to 545 and check where you are to vote. Mm. The 545 platform, texting platform, uh, had been modified. Would you be able to tell us about that? Yes, what we have done in the 545 platform is that if a person is a pre-poll voter, at, uh, the, the SMS response actually tells you that you will be voting via pre-poll and that means if you check our website or check the late uh, local dailies for the schedule, uh, you can find the venue on the schedule and the date and time. What sort of message would you like to give to Fijians watching FBC TV tonight uh, who will be going into uh, pre-polling uh, in, the, in the coming days? Um, we, we have organized for pre-polling in areas where there is uh, limited accessibility and uh, in that regard um, we are still working on uh, further plans so that we are prepared come 17 September. Um, the Fijian Elections Office uh, wishes to remind all voters who have yet not checked where they are voting uh, to take advantage of the 545 system which is uh, very quick and it's also free uh, so that come 17th of September they are not disappointed. Mr. Sunny, with the exercise carried out today, what sort of indications are you getting at this stage as a precursor uh, to September 17th? Um, yes, the response is uh, uh, very good. Uh, voters are very interested. It shows that a lot of Fijians are interested in voting, although this is a voluntary system. And with the turnout today, uh, I had a chat with the chairman of the Electoral Commission who went around to do some rounds. Uh, he said the response, the turnout was good, and uh, uh, we anticipate this to be the, the case as we go to 17th September. Thank you very much uh, for Thank joining us tonight. Much. That was the election supervisor, Mr. Mohammed Sanim. Back to you, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Chanal. 8,029 people cast their votes in pre-polling at last count earlier today. People voted at 18 pre-polling centres in the Central Division, 24 centres in the West and 26 in the North. Polling begins in the Eastern Division tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we will have 76 pre-poll venues operating. And um, that would be 17 in the Central Division, 23 in the Western Division, 15 in the Northern Division and 21 in the Eastern Division. And uh, that is the number of voters, uh, uh, that is the number of venues that will be operating tomorrow. 
The Elections Office has confirmed 16,064 people will be covered by pre-polling in the Central Division. In the Eastern Division, there are 17,932 people registered for pre-polling. 12,022 voters will be covered in pre-polls in the Northern Division, while there are 19,857 people registered to pre-poll in the West. One of the first communities to have pre-polling today was Naividula in Tailevu. The settlement is in the interior of Vitilevu, about 20 minutes drive from Korovo town. What the Sony Rakandroka reports, voters had no problems casting their vote and there was a large turnout. The people of Naividula in Tailevu say they waited for years for this day, exercising their right to elect their leaders. Uh, I thank the Almighty for the great preparation and uh, I hope that we will choose a good government that will run us tomorrow for the betterment of Fiji. It's estimated there are more than 200 voters in Naibidula village and two surrounding settlements. The turnout at this pre-polling centre is an encouraging as a precursor to election day on September 17th. Young and old and persons with disabilities all cast their votes. However, there was some confusion on how the numbers are listed on the ballot paper. The numbering is done by column and not by rows. This led to some voters spending more time to find the number of their candidate. Well, this one is, I, 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 I'm very sorry with the old people. Uh, I don't know whether they can elect what they want or no. When they put down in numbers and they mix it up, oh good. Uh, I, I don't know. They lost. Here in Naibidula, everyone is waiting anxiously to cast their votes. When I spoke to some of the locals here, they said that they hope that their votes today will not only bring good future for the people of Fiji, but for Naibidula. What is on the record, Roger? For FBC News. The pre-polling process for 2014 general elections had its first hiccup today due to some miscommunication at Namoli village in Lautoka this morning. Villagers were ready to cast their votes and were expecting election staff this morning. Headman Chochi Satala says he was called by the Bar Provincial Office yesterday notifying him of pre-polling at the village hall from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Even civil servants were turning up to the community hall only to be turned away. Everything was been ready uh, yesterday, uh, and they told us that they will be here this morning. So far, we've been waiting uh, till now. Nothing. Nobody's turned up. Uh, Nobody has called, even called us to let us know that uh, if there are any changes uh, to the uh, polling date again. The elections office has confirmed there was never any pre-polling intended for Namoli village in Lautoka and it's scheduled for polling on September 17th. There is another Namoli community hall in Kayasi where pre-polling was conducted today. A more detailed list of pre-poll centres will be published in the newspapers tomorrow. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbani Marama will appear on two live talkback shows with Sodelpa leader Rote Mumu Kepa. Rote Mumu had requested for a live debate with Mbani Marama. Fiji Broadcasting Corporation has managed to secure this highly anticipated event that could have a huge impact on the way Fijians vote come September 17th. Mbani Marama says he's managed to clear his appointments to debate with Rote Mumu Kepa live on a one-hour Itao Kei talkback show on Radio Fiji 1 and Bull FM at 7 p.m. Friday, the 12th of September. This will be immediately followed by a live appearance on FBC TV's popular For the Record show. This live TV appearance will also be simulcast live on all FBC's six radio stations, Radio Fiji 1, Radio Fiji 2, Mirchi FM, Gold FM, Bull FM and Today FM. FBC has informed Sadelpa executives about Mbani Marama's acceptance of Rote Mumu Kepa's challenge to appear live for the ultimate face-off. Well, it wasn't easy. Uh, we tried for quite a while to get uh, the Fiji First Leader to confirm his attendance. Uh, initially, after Rote Mumu uh, made her intentions known to appear on a, on a talkback show uh, with Mr. Mbani Marama, we started the ball rolling behind the scenes. We were calling and constantly in touch to get the confirmation, and now we've got it. The show will be live on FBC TV next Friday. Confirmation from Sadelpa about Rote Mumu's attendance is expected soon. After the break, vessel owners encouraged to register their ships.
how are you doing, Fiji? Yes, indeed, fast approaching. Well, the major bulletin, but. Before we even talk about the major bulletin, what about my little news flash? Oh my gosh, please don't let me get started on that again. Getting on the bus yesterday, and then he tells me, brother, move on to the other seat, because we can fit two people where you're sitting. <laughs> hey, you can't blame the dude for being honest, okay? <laughs> There's nothing honest about what he said. Hi, I'm Pivin. And I'm Fina. Your daybreak duo on Gold FM. FM. From Mondays to Fridays. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Turn Welcome back, this is FBC News. The commander of the Fiji Military Forces, Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga, is urging families of the 45 captured troops not to listen to rumors about their loved ones. Tikoitonga says as of yesterday, more than 35 families have visited the crisis management center in Vatuanga Suva. Ritika Pratap reports. The RFMF has discovered that family members of the captured soldiers are being told rumors and the commander is urging people not to indulge in such activities. Uh, we've also had uh, reports from the families that are visiting us that some of the families or some of their families or some uh, of the people in public are continuously um, giving them a, a much more uh, uh, negative picture of what may be happening in Syria. There has been no progress despite intense negotiations in Syria. Brigadier General Moses Seti Koitonga says during this difficult time, people must not discourage the families of captured soldiers. It is quite uh, appalling to hear stories of uh, these families who have visited the center on what uh, other um, uh, people are telling them. And I appeal to all Fijians while we uh, pray for our soldiers in, uh, uh, in Syria and those that are being held uh, captive, that we be sensitive to the families and the emotional uh, uh, difficulties that they may be going through. Prayer vigils and counseling sessions are being held for the families of the 45 Fijian peacekeepers. We now have uh, teams made up of the chaplain to go out and visit the families that uh, uh, may find it difficult uh, to make themselves available here. Um, unfortunately, there are some that are in the islands that we may not be able to talk to directly, and we appeal to the public to give these families um, uh, support in whatever way they can. The commander says if any family member needs any information on the detention of the troops, they should contact the RFMF directly to get the real picture of the situation in Syria. It's seven days now since the Fijians were taken captive by the Al Nusra Front, which has recently made three demands to the United Nations in order to release the peacekeepers. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The two suspects alleged to have been involved in the $50,000 robberies r robbery recently in Nandi appeared at the Lautoka High Court this morning. Senithi Alimboila and Eroni Mbali Nukulala appeared before Justice De Silva. Akusi Tatale was in court. Senithi Alimboila and Eroni Mbali Nukulala are alleged to have been involved in the $50,000 robbery from City Forex Exchange in Nandi last two weeks. They are both charged with one count of aggravated robbery. Boyla asked the High Court for legal aid services and will reappear on September 18th for mention. Second suspect, Eroni Mbale Nukulala, had to be carried into the courtroom by police officers with visible injuries to his arms and legs. Justice De Silva questioned Mbale Nukulala as to how he had sustained the injuries, to which he replied that he was assaulted by police officers. 
He also told the court that the Nandi Magistrates Court had ordered that he be admitted in hospital again after his court hearing last week and should not be removed until he is cleared by medical authorities. However, he alleges he hasn't been taken back to the hospital and has been remanded in a cell. During the hearing, a mobile phone rang in Balai Nukulala's possession and had to be confiscated from him. Both the accused will reappear in court on 18th September. Bail has been denied. Akusita Tale, FBC News. We'll now cross live to our West reporter, Akusita Tale, who has more on the story. Thanks, Jackie. The two are alleged to be part of the five masked men armed with knives who robbed City Forex Foreign Exchange in Nandi Town on August 15th. They stole a bag from two employees who were on their way to the bank before fleeing in a taxi. However, two suspects were intercepted by police at Tangange in Singatoka, traveling in a minibus. The third suspect, Vili Soko, passed away a week after his arrest. This is currently under investigation by police and four officers have been suspended. Thanks for that, Ako. Vessel owners are being encouraged to register their ships with Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji. Permanent Secretary for Transport, Francis Keane, says regulations were amended almost a year ago to reduce the cost of having vessels registered, and ship owners need not worry about high costs. Savara Tamboa has the details. The charges were dropped in October 2013 following a cabinet decision. It targets registration for vessels less than 100 gross tonnage costing trade for ships less than 10 meters and survey fees for vessels less than 10 tons. We've been encouraged eh, by the support that has come from uh, all stakeholders. Uh, since uh, this reduction in fee was announced uh, uh, in, the, in October last year uh, and uh, was uh, made public, I believe, uh, I understand, in all the media outlets, uh, it has been promising uh, to see the feedback and to see the number of uh, boat owners that have come on board to register uh, their ships. Marine registration fee was reduced by 80%. The costing trade license fee saw a decrease of 70%, while the marine survey fees were reduced by 60%. All of this was done to encourage ship operators to register their vessels. Francis Kin says a lot of ship owners are making use of the reduced cost and complying the maritime transport decree and the ship registration decree. Those who haven't have been urged to do so. Uh, previously, this was not the case. So this reduction in fee was uh, basically to get uh, our maritime uh, transport stakeholders, particularly the small boat owners, uh, those boat, uh, boats that uh, were below 10 meters and 100 uh, gross ton. Uh, those are the ones that we had encouraged and if they come on board to register their vessel. Meanwhile, Keane confirms three government vessels have been deployed to the Eastern Division to help with pre-polling, while another leaves for Northern Law Group today. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. For the first time in five years, the Ministry of Education has reviewed the teachers' and school leaders' competency framework. The framework was developed in 2009 under the Fiji Education Sector Program. Sakyu Sanaivua has more. Implementing the teachers and school leaders framework in 2009 was one of the policy put in place by the Ministry for Education. The aim was to fulfill the ministry mission and vision in providing quality education for peace, change and progress. The Acting Permanent Secretary for Education, Bazundra Kumar, says one of the main reasons for the review is to improve the quality of education provided by the teachers. We want to improve uh, the standard of teachers in the school so that our teachers are qualified, personally trained, because with this competency they will be able to personally assess themselves and we want them to be motivated, we want them to be committed and we want them to be well supported teachers. The results according to Kumar were numerous. Uh, that it is very important uh, that we revise this uh, competency level to match with target six of uh, the post-2015 education agenda. Uh, our ministry is very much into this uh, achieving the education for all goals. And Fiji is one of those countries of the South Pacific which has been the first one to achieve about 97% attainment in that. The competency framework is in the form of a booklet that has been given to all the school head teachers and principal. 
The framework will be used to assess and evaluate their performance. The Ministry believes that it was important to revise this competency framework to achieve the goal of education for all. Sekou Senevoa, FBC News. We turn to sports now. Here's Jamie. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. Coming up, Fiji football allows Nandi and Lambasa an extra week's rest before resuming National League games. Details after the break. मेरा चांद मुझे आया है नजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर छाया है नशा मेरे आंखों पर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर रह जाए ना प्यासा मेरा प्यार मेरे बाहों में भर दे मेरा यार ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting. Racing <clears throat> because I am fast and slick, and plus I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Bulumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 p.m. to 7, right here on Today FM. Today's hit music. <laughs> Welcome back to FBC Sports. Vodafone Fiji Under-20 football coach Ravinesh Kumar was pleased to see all his players return to the Mbar Football Academy yesterday. Eleven players were excused for district duties in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament and have returned to continue preparations for the 2015 FIFA Under-20 World Cup in New Zealand. Charlie Ndaudakadaka has more. Vodafone Fiji Under-20 players put in a strong display for their districts during the Inc. Battle of the Giants tournament. Now that they have joined the national squad in camp at the Mbar Football Academy, national coach Ravinesh Kumar will be looking to give them a couple of days rest. All the players uh, are in uh, from the BOG. Uh, some of them uh, are recovering now because they have played continuous 90-minute uh, games. And some of them also played during the secondary school's IDP. So some of them are on uh, recovery phase and some have already joined the training session. This is the team's first training camp since qualifying for the World Cup. Kumar is hoping to get the players in top shape in order to select a strong squad. We have also called in some trials too, selected from secondary schools in the other league matches. So we have about eight boys who have come in for trial. So we are looking into them too, if they can make up to the uh, team. And uh, yeah, we will work on to different strategies now to match up with the World Cup level. Technical advisor and former Socceroos coach Frank Farina will join the squad next Monday. Talent of the Kadak, FBC Sports. Well, the Nandi and Lambasa football sides have been given a breather before resuming the Fiji Sun Skipper Tuna National Football League. Fiji Football Association has decided to shift their fixture to next week to allow ample rest following the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament. Talent of the Kadak reports. The Lambasa and Nandi clash scheduled to be held this weekend has been pushed back by a week to enable the team's proper rest following the Inc. BOG tournament. We had a, a Fiji Sun Skipatuna National Football League fixture this weekend uh, between Nandi and Lambasa. Uh, so, uh, after a request from teams, uh, we decided to just uh, give them one one more week time since they've just uh, came. Uh, they just came from. Uh, uh, two week long tournament. The final leg of the competition is not only a battle for top spot, with some teams also fighting for survival. Uh, you know, we have a uh, last two rounds, uh, two round, two full rounds, and a few more, a few more games left. And uh, it, uh, teams uh, at Liga, uh, like uh, during these stages, teams will have to really improve. Uh, like uh, we have relegation, uh, bottom team will be relegated. So teams which are in the bottom half of the table really need to pull up in order to survive in the competition next year. The Fiji FA expects the National League to be completed by the 21st of September. Talento Dakadak, FBC Sports.
That's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> The Ministry of Labor is in the process to have two services within the Ministry acquire International Quality Management Standard Certification. The Mediation and National OHS Services ISO Certification will mark a new dimension of international certified service delivery for the first time for any government ministry. Several employees from the two departments also received certificates for their efforts. Chonio Sumate says citizens of Fiji deserve world-class government departments. This launch does not mean that the two units within our Ministry of Labor that have been able to show uh, the auditors and those that have assessed them that they have met the requirements of ISO 9000 does not mean that we have achieved it, but it means that we have put in place a framework that will allow us to get there. As part of getting an ISO certification, the organization must perform internal audits to check how its quality management system is performing. Let's take a look at today's conditions with Trish. Why thank you Jackie, your bright yellow dress describes today's weather perfectly which means good weather galore. Looking at today's map, Nandi, Lotoka, Mbasa, Vusavu and Lambasa all had fair conditions all throughout the day. As for capital Suva, had fair conditions all day except for scattered showers. Temperatures Suva 28, Nandi 29, Lotoka 30, Ba 31, Savu Savu 28 and Lambasa 32. Palo, Toka, Nandi, Raki, Raki and Tavua all will have cool 17 degrees tonight. And Thursday's forecast, same as today, Suva might have fair conditions in the morning with occasional showers in the afternoon. Nandi, Lotoka, Mbasa, Vusavu and Lambasa all should have fair conditions all throughout the day. Mariner's forecast, easterly winds 10 to 15 knots and up to 20 knots through the passages. This is today's weather photo taken at Singatoka by Vishal Anand. Thanks so much for that, Trish. Recapping our top stories tonight. Day one of pre-polling has ended in remote parts of Fiji with hundreds of people casting their votes. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbani Marama confirms live talkback show with Sudelpa leader Rote Mumukepa and RFMF calls on people to stop spreading rumors over the capture of Fijian troops. Now time for the Fijian Speak segment. Right now, like the Fiji First, we are thankful of the government for the last eight years of development. I will vote Sudalpa. Uh, Rambuka government. He said that divide up the uh, tax free zone, they give him up to and have given to the poor people, a small industry. They never make it. Then how he said they're gonna get make it again. Fiji First for the free education. I can go back to school now. Meanwhile, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, text subspace FBC to 777. That's news tonight. Good evening. Radio Fiji 2 देश की धड़कन पर आप पर स्वागत है बच्चों की दुनिया में हमेशा की तरह आज भी हम आपके लिए कहानियां और कविताएं लेकर आए हैं और बच्चों आप हमें कॉल भी कर सकते हैं नमस्कार मैं हूं पल्लवी रेडियो Fiji 2 देश की धड़कन पर मंडे टू फ्राइडे 3 से लेकर 4 बजे तक बच्चों की दुनिया में और 4 से लेकर 7 बजे तक मस्तानी शाम के सफर में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ